First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, smart girl, rough girl, fashion mitchell, tough girl, you could sit with us, girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Hello. Hey, are we live? I think, I think we're so. live. You guys, are we doing yeah. happening? We're live! We're live. Hey, everyone. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us for our second Drama Queens live event, you guys. Um, I f- I'm just like looking at my phone here. We have so many people joining us today. I know. Oh, I'm so stoked. So like, I'm so excited. 23. Um, 23 20, is a big, big deal to us. Let's talk about it. It keeps coming back and it keeps coming back accidentally. Like the fact that our New York Times article came out on the 23rd when we were on the set of Good Sam filming and we none of us knew it was coming out that day. We just like suddenly our phones started what blowing up. Just weird went. text. It was so wild. And we were like, wow, isn't it crazy that we're together on the first 23 of the year? And then an hour later, our article came out and we were like, what's happening? And then they announced that our episode was airing today. And we were like, on March 23rd, really? Really? We didn't oh, do yeah. that on purpose. Which is a double whammy because it's 323. So we've got both boys basketball jerseys covered here. Um, and our fan base has been so cool. Like we've seen like 23 tattoos on people. And they're the ones that give us a big heads up whenever anything 23 is happening. I should get a 23 tattoo at this point, right? Are like, you going to do it? I feel I like know. we need some kind of a tattoo, you guys. We do. Did we ever get fan art for our, the idea? Weren't we talking about this on the show? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. guys. Anyone, the fan art. Yeah, anyone who's with us tonight, we love seeing your art and the drawings that you've made. I mean, send us ideas for tattoos. We might get Joy- them in our bodies. Are people disappointed when they find out you don't really have the 23 tattoo? <laughs> yes, I definitely had some fans be like, oh, I want to see it. And I'm like, first of all, I'm not going to pull my pants down for you. But second of all, but, but maybe. <laughs> you got to buy me dinner first at least. But second of all, no, I, I, I don't. I didn't actually get that tattoo. But um, I don't know. Maybe it might be fun. Maybe I'll get one somewhere. A little yeah. 23 on my shoulder or something. It feels like it's about time. Well, we just surpassed this like major, major milestone with our podcast. Yeah. Little engine that could. You want to walk us through it, Sophia? Why don't you tell us what we've won? Guys, (laughs) again, we're paying attention. The signs are coming for us. Um, Just, was it last week or the week before? Now time is Literally, as this episode is airing on 323. Yeah. We we got the news that we crossed 23 million downloads of Drama Queen. Guys, my daughter gets so embarrassed when I do that. (laughs) Is your mom (laughs) there? Wait a minute, guys. Mom, I used to do that to my mom. I mean, what do we, what do we want? But seriously, like all of this lining up to have 23 million people listening to our podcast, we were marveling when the what is it called? The list, I guess, for like most popular podcasts of 2021 came out. The top five, it's us and then four true crime shows. And we were like, <laughs> guys, we're we're sometimes- bringing the nostalgia into the murder room. We like it. Sometimes so I feel like our show is like true crime. I mean, there's <laughs> enough like going on that we're just crimes of the heart. The layers. Yeah, I like it. True crime and romantic comedy at the same time. Yes. In the so, later seasons. I want that. Yeah. It's a genre. There's a genre there coming. Yeah. Um, hey, Hillary, will you talk a bit about the charity that we are sponsoring yeah. tonight? Because I know that you have a lot of experience being from, you said you're from a chapter one high school and just, you know, having the experience of kids being uh, not unable to play sports because of finances. So I know you have experience. Yeah. With well, this was actually Joy's idea. She brought this to the table and we all jumped on it because high school sports is such a big part of One Tree Hill's narrative. You know, we spent so much time in that gym and Supporting real high school kids is important to us. So Good Sports is our charity partner tonight. They drive equitable access in youth sports and physical activity by supporting children in high need communities to achieve their greatest potential on the field 
and in life because we know that they're connected. The benefits of sports and physical activity in a child's life are very well documented and good sports exist to make sure cost does not keep kids on the bench. So like Joy said, I went to a Title I high school. We leveled the playing field by getting lots of donations for them through my charity, um, High School Forever, that we raised money for Parkview High School. And all of a sudden, you guys, once we gave them money, my kids are winning everything. Really? Like, this is awesome. High school lady patriots are killing it. Um, yeah, it's it's a good feeling to be able to level the playing field. So thank you guys at home mm -hmm. for helping us do that tonight. Yeah, Absolutely. so many young people don't have a talent gap. They have a resource gap. And yeah. where we can fill that gap and the three of us can take a legacy of a show that was about, you know, small town kids playing for their home team and do something for kids around the country. It's really, really meaningful. So, you know, we're, we're probably going to thank you all for being here a lot tonight. But thank you for helping us use this community and like this fierce amount of love we have for each other to raise funds for people who need it. It's really meaningful to us that this that this fam has been able to turn into a positive force in the world. So thank you. Absolutely. Babe, should we toast to that? Should we toast? We, we, we should. should. And, you know, we have something special to toast with. Um, <laughs> hey, friends at home, if you have some whiskey, especially if you have some Johnny Walker or Jane oh, Walker. Oh, you this? No. <laughs> Oh, I have a display back here with our oh, crown. Yeah. Queen's crown. <laughs> um, I'm going to lead us through a little, uh, please. A little adventure, a little cocktail. Okay. This is going to be like those YouTube unboxing videos. Like an unboxing video? I'm so bad. Bad. I'm behind my ring from Blue Nile, by the way. Look at that. That's what you want. Gorgeous. Ooh. I know. Okay, here we go. Guys, can I also Ooh. just tell you a funny? So I'm working on my show in Canada. You can hear Jason Isaacs, who plays my father, screaming with the rest of my cast in the other room because we're gathered to watch this. They're watching us on a laptop downstairs. Hi, guys. Hi. Our friends at Johnny Walker sent us Black Label to say congrats on 23 million views. You guys got the cocktail kits. All I got was the whiskey because customs wouldn't let me have the rest. But they wouldn't see. That's the best part. Kids in fruit across an international border. So, oh yeah, that's weird. I'm just right. gonna have to found okay. out. Okay, so listen, it's just an ounce and a half. Okay, get your highball glass. Anybody at home who's got a highball glass, give me some ice. Okay. You know, a couple of, like I brought a plastic bag. Two, uh, two, three, four, you know, cubes of ice there. Okay. A little bit of ice. All right. We're going to do an ounce and a half. Here we go. Done. I can't uh, pour and hold it up in front of. Here we go. That looks nice. Is that the big end or the little end? The, the big end is two ounces. So fill either the big end up a little less or the second, the small end up a time and a half. We're still the big end up all the way. It's late where we are. You don't know. ask me to do that. Yeah, we're on the East Coast, Joy. <laughs> you know me. It's nine o'clock where we are, baby. <laughs> um. All right. So yeah. Next is here. We got um. We got some guava. I want that. Guava is known to have benefits for your skin. Oh, for your heart oh. health. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh shoot. Uh, guys, I I just. <laughs> So oh, sorry. It's just spilled everywhere. <laughs> at my friend's house. That's why they're your friends, Joy. They're using That's why they're your friends. Silly. Anyway, we're topping this off okay. with a little bit of guava juice. I have sparkling water. Appropriately, it's Canada dry, so I'm going to make a little bit into it. <laughs> um, it's actually really good. I would not have expected to put those two together and enjoyed it, but it's really good. Mm. I'm so mm. sorry. Drama queens. It's so nice. Say hi. This is my friend. Hi, you guys. Hi, friend. Hi, this is your good friend. Hi. And his wife, Laura's house. And hi, they're like, hi. Cheers to you guys. Thanks for hosting our girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. Our pleasure. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay? It's good? fine, but maybe just we should soak up. You. Like, I got you. It, <laughs> it really like champagne. Listen, guys. This is very Haley of you right now to just <laughs> like <laughs> silly thing. And you know what? The last time we were together, you made such an elegant cocktail. God doesn't give with both hands. If you do a really great thing, then you have to be a mess just yeah. to balance the universe. Like, this feels right. It feels right. Okay. All right, what are we cheersing to? Cheers. What's happened over the course of the last 23 million downloads that we want to cheers to? 
Girls, I love you. We have learned so much about each other and from each other and about mm -hmm. ourselves through this experience. I'm so proud to be your friends. I'm so proud of all of our fans for going on this journey with us with the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys all stick with us. We are nowhere near done. Just hang on. Just hang on. I love it. Hang on. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Okay, we have someone that a lot of the fans want to talk about. Maybe they want to talk to this person. What do you think? Should we should we bring our friend in? Our friend. Our that was me. That was me drunk winking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bring him in, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god! Oh my god! Brian Greenberg, why are you so handsome? I miss you, girls. I miss oh my you. gosh. You're better oh, looking now than you were then, if that's possible. It's so Good Lord. Lord. Ugh. 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 Where are you? I'm in LA. I'm in home. Oh, really? Whose dog is that? Oh, this is my friend's dog. This is Lila. <laughs> Lila the dog. She always wants to be where the action is. Oh, so um, what happened to your you pets? I do have a uh, I got a cold. My daughter had a cold, and then she was like, Mommy, can I sleep in your bed? Yeah. You <laughs> yes. know what that's about now. Why do you look well rested, Brian? You're not supposed to be sleeping. I'm, not, I'm, not I'm, I'm exhausted. I have twins. I'm not sleeping. It's good though. Oh, well, let's get into that. I mean, we. Um, why we didn't I get any whiskey? What's going on here? What? Why? What's going on? We're gonna we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna be home in a week, and I'm personally gonna deliver a bottle of whiskey. Wait, can we door dash you whiskey right now? Would it even be there in time? <laughs> I'm so game to do it. Um, <laughs> Look at you us on over you Hi. being a dad on this freaking show, and now you're a dad in real life. Uh, it's crazy. You were surprisingly good at it, though, like in our early 20s. What was your baby experience up until our show? My baby experience until I had kids was only playing Jake on Montreal Hill. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like my, my sister doesn't have any kids. I just haven't been around kids in. You were so natural just with, with baby Jenny. You were so natural with her. Well, let's let the audience know that there were like four baby Jennies. So like whenever <laughs> one would cry and the other one would come in. And <laughs> so, but the guitar thing really helped. Like that was, yeah. they that would relax them. And now I do that with my kids too. It's kind of a- You do? Yeah. What them. are you singing to your twins? Say yes. At least, which I only know one song. <laughs> Still <laughs> on repeat for like 20 years. Um, I don't know, I explain whatever. Yeah, mostly my stuff. Um, that's the only things I can remember. Okay, so talk to us a little bit about when we first started doing the show. Wow, okay. You that's get the remember. message, you've got to play basketball. Right. Um, <laughs> right. Did you play? I thought I could play, and uh, I mean, I played like pickup and stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, I play basketball. Like, I could shoot around. I know how to dribble a ball." But like, that's as close to playing real basketball as I'll ever get. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and once I got to like One Tree Hill, and they were doing practices, and I was like, James was dunking. Yeah, I was way out of my league, but you know, <laughs> power, of, power of television. Was it? Was it also a little intimidating for them to be like, hey, go play basketball with all these people who do it every day, and you're going to be the guy who plays in Chuck Taylor's? Right. Where, where yeah, did that, that come was, from, right? That was a bad Why idea. did you play in Converse? I can't remember if that was my idea or Mark Schwann's idea. I can't remember, but um, I think there was just something like there was like an old soul to Jake, mm. and, and, you know, he was like, he was out of Hoosiers, you know? Yeah, he was like a throwback. Uh, yeah. Uh, Do you oh, regret yeah. that decision oh, later? Yeah. A, oh yeah, that hurt. Yeah, eighteen hours. Because <laughs> we had really long. I mean, we talked about this on our show. We had the basketball days were the most brutal because they were just yeah. epic. Everyone was there all day yeah. long. You never knew when you were needed. You were always like on. Yeah. What do you remember about shooting those basketball days? Like I said, that's as close as I'm going to ever get to playing real sports. So it was really fun for me because I got to look good. And they, they drew plays for us. Um, I do remember one time, Chad, I was doing a, we were doing a play, and I remember Chad, like, was supposed to, like, 
get out of the way and i think he forgot and i like came down on him and i broke i'm pretty sure i broke a rib uh i remember of that your part. own whose rib my rib oh god i think I, I came down on him like he was supposed to move but he didn't move it was like a little mix up uh that happens but i was like oh, i remember that vividly um but uh how long, how long does it take to heal from a broken rib the thing about a rib is you can't you just gotta you just gotta let it heal. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, so all that, that soulful really like Jake squinting was just Greenberg like in pain. Like <laughs> his book is like, really heavy. Totally. <laughs> um, but no, I mean that was probably I played it so much basketball because we all became friends, like all the guys on the team, and we'd all play outside of uh shooting and stuff. So like we we do practices nonstop. And I mean, there wasn't that's all we did down there was play basketball and, and shoot the show. Mm -hmm. um, what were you like in high school for real? Like who who was Brian Greenberg? Class of what were you? Class of ninety seven. Six. Six. Yeah, I was the guy who was kind of like I didn't have a crew or a clique. I could kind of be with anybody. I had a lot of mm -hmm. friends, but I didn't have like my own clique. Like mm -hmm. I was in theater. I like I played lacrosse. Um, you Did know, you go to a big school? Yeah, big public school in St. Louis, Parkway Central. Shout out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna shout out our high schools on this one. <laughs> shout out. So, wait, you did theater in high school? Were you like a musical yeah. boy? Did you do Grease? I feel like every boy I did does guys Grease. and dolls. Were you Nathan or were you? Uh, I was Nathan Nathan. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I did Oklahoma. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you do musicals in high school because those those are the only plays that you do in high school. So you just kind of yeah. do it by default. But um, did you, I'm kind of a theater nerd. Did you fall in love with all your co-stars in theater? Because theater is like such an intense, on top of each other experience. Yeah. I would always fall in love with my co-stars. And then, you know, yeah. it's like over three months later. Like, what did, did you have that experience? Just with you three. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Brian Greenberg, you are such a flirt, and I can't stand you. Um, Nothing's changed. So, so here's the deal. I catch so much shit on the internet because all I do is rave about Jake and Peyton. I'm like, I guys, I blush. I can't even. Like, we watch these scenes back, and you're so smooth, and you're so good at it, and we're all just, like, dorky, giddy girls, and the fans are like, okay, Hillary, it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a confession that I actually haven't gone back and watched any of these episodes. So it thing. feels like such a long time ago. But what I do remember is like we had crazy good chemistry. Crazy. We're yeah. always um, it, You know, we all remember the show, but like not the episode specifically. And when the yeah. three of us have gone back to watch, <laughs> like, I feel like in every video where there's a Peyton and Jake scene, I'm just like this. I'm like, I can't even, I can't, I'm so red. My, fa my face is sweating. It's, I didn't, we're I mean, also like, what? This is crazy. Yeah, like, I remember we, they kind of went for it. I was like, shirts off. I was like, what yeah. is going on? I'm, what a, this is a network what, what show. You were older. You were older than us, which is probably why you played yeah. such, you know, such a mature high schooler. But did you feel like when you came in, um, did you feel like you were kind of in on the same level, or did you feel like you you no. were watching a, um, you know, kind of all like no, no, I mean like you're up here with your talent and oh, your no, understanding. I didn't feel like I was above you guys. I felt like oh, you're all serious regulars, and I'm just kind of here guest starring i'm not really sure where i fit in but you guys were so cool oh, and you so, like it feels so the opposite. you're so humble and sweet well you guys you were like, like even you know, my other job was Clooney. <laughs> was we Clooney. were like exactly. wow well, that must be something how's that going for you there cool oh you're making a movie with meryl streep and uber yeah. Thurman? great we're so it's <laughs> <laughs> so weird it level jumps so quick right like i was like trying to be a serious regular on one tree hill I was dying yeah. to be a series regular and like for the first season yeah. and we were kind of like, I don't know, maybe there's a big cast and just get in line. I was like, all right, well, I, lo I really love the show and I love the role. And, um, and then I got this other thing called unscripted, which is an HBO show uh, with George Clooney. And, uh, and 
I was like, I'm going to take this. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah. Montreal was like, well, well, now we want you. And I was like, well, it's not funny how that works. <laughs> um, but uh, I was like, too late, you know. So, but I, but we worked it out so we could, I could keep coming back. And I, you know, even after I did Prime, I like, I kept coming back and kept coming back for like mm. three seasons, I think. What do you think made you want to keep coming back? I just. I mean, the show, like, it was a really special show. Those first, mm -hmm. I, I only know the early One Tree Hill. Like, I don't know what happened later yeah. on. Um, uh, Cause I, there's like a whole cast of characters that I never have never even met. But yeah. I just felt like we had something special and I love the character and I, I love working with all of you. And I don't mm -hmm. know, I just felt like we, we were onto something. I didn't want to let it go. And it was such a cool, like a rich mm -hmm. character that I, I love playing and the fans. Cool were really responded to it too. So I wanted to give them, you know, a full arc. They did. And yeah. you always had such a maturity about you anyway. I think that's what I mean. Like we were all sort of fumbling around as young kids and you felt there was something about you that felt like mature and like you had seen more than we had seen in life. And like, I don't know. Did you, do you remember? You graduated college, Brian. I mean, like you that's right. I had been on a few sets. Well, oh, maybe I did a movie before. That was kind of like why I had like the seniority or the experience. Yeah. But I didn't do, I was never on like a real show. That was like, I think my first recurring character. So, I mean, oh, I was just bullshitting you guys. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> we had fun though. I mean, we got to do yeah. fun stuff outside of the show too. Like there was a period where MTV had you and I host a Valentine's Day special. Because like Peyton and Jake were like, hot and heavy at the time yeah, and i was like I, that. I feel like i've got photo booth pictures I, that's what i was about to say i had that on my fridge for like years the photo you booth did photo. yeah i don't know where I they are to see those we had so much fun and then brian had this pack of buddies from nyu oh. and anytime we all had to go do press in new york i was like yo yo call your friends <laughs> and i just used him to like oh, we went, yeah we went out a lot actually during those days you had fun friends. They're, you know. They're still fun. Actually, they're not fun anymore. No, we're all friends <laughs> now, Brian. We're not fun anymore. No. It's, it's a memory. Fun. What's your favorite memory of just, like, hanging out in Wilmington? What was your Yeah, favorite? that's what I want to know. What are your favorite yeah. places mm -hmm. there? Oh, man. I don't know. I remember going to that Dixie Diner a lot. <laughs> Dixie Grill. Yeah, yeah Dixie Grill. Um, Back when you could still you smoke inside. Out. Yeah. Those yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to smoke back then. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember, Hillary, when you bought a house and you gave me a tour of it for the first time, and I just remember so much taxidermy. Oh, yeah. Really dark wall paint and okay, so much taxidermy. Hill, where's that book I got you? Is it there? Oh, my you? God. Joy just bought me a book on taxidermy called Creepy Taxidermy, and my kids so are creepy. obsessed with it. I, um, guys, I go through phases. I was a dark... <laughs> You're not still in the taxidermy phase? No, I mean, I still have all of it and more. Um, I just have like two kids in the house, so I try not to creep them out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We told a story on the use. podcast, Brian, about you leaving your guitar at my house. And oh. My boyfriend at the time being like, what the f this? And I was like, it's Greenberg's well, because guitar. I was coming in out of town and I didn't want to travel with the yeah. guitar. And I was like, can I leave yeah. it with you? Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. were the dude everybody's boyfriend hated you because they were like, oh, yeah. this dude coming <laughs> in, singing the songs, being cool. Well, wasn't it your boyfriend who was part on the crew as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and then he was we, had do, like, those, we had to do those lovemaking scenes. Yeah, that was, was awkward on, for everyone. That, that was awkward. <laughs> that was weird. That's the worst. Oh, no, also, Brian is true. was always there. He was he cool, was... but it's just weird. No, but Hillary's right. You were the guy who all the other guys were really mad about. And like Joy, you were saying earlier that we all, I don't know, we responded to your calm and your cool. And even if it was one movie, you really seemed like you knew what you were doing in the industry. And we were all like little fumbling, like, we were all kids. like every time you would like tell one of us we'd done a good job on something, we'd be like, Brian said I did a good job. Yeah, you know, I really I feel like I'm feel growing. I feel, like I, I feel like I've figured something out. And all the other guys in the room were just like, shut up <laughs> well, we're all just surprised out. or not we still haven't i think like you you were all stuck in this bubble of being yeah. series regulars and i had i could come in and give some perspective because i would pop in and pop out like i was never there yeah. for too long 
And so I kind of came in and I got to like change up the energy a little bit yeah. and just like, you know, just kind of clean the palate a little bit. And then I'd be out um, yeah. and I'd come back for my guitar. But my I don't guitar. know, specific memories. We just, I remember we all hung out all the time. It was so much fun. How many so, things did you do, Brian? Yeah. Uh, I remember I did, I think on and off for the first three seasons. And I didn't do the pilot. Like I came in right. on the, the second episode. Yeah. We talk about all the time how you're a real life Lucas. Oh, oh. Like, I'm Lucas. a brooder. Introspective, yeah. no, just like introspective and yeah. smart and like, you know, yeah. problem solver. Well, part uh, of you coming and going and coming and going was that you were actually playing music. Like you started playing music on the show, mm -hmm. was it season two or season three? I can't remember. But George, oh. we were doing those shows together. We would go on tour and we, we played yeah. a bunch of shows together. That was a yeah. huge highlight for me. Just doing all those concerts and letting us too, Brian. Us too. <laughs> we love the too. House of Blues and all that stuff. And <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. that was so much fun. Did we? We never did a song together, did we? I don't know if we did. I mean, I remember going to see you perform at the Hotel Cafe. That, but that was just your show. Yeah, and I think and, we did a House of Blues gig one yeah, time. Yeah, we did a House of Blues. Hey, it's never too late. Hey. No. You in fact, it's exactly the right time. Get that voice back. Let's talk. That's right. It's coming back. Brian, are you still performing? What's going on? COVID kind of made concerts a weird thing, but I haven't. Yeah, since COVID, I haven't. I did like some online stuff, but I haven't really been playing except for my kids. Um, mm -hmm. I've been working more on, uh, you know, writing, and I'm. Uh, you know, I've been, you know, acting and I, I, I'm about to direct a movie that I wrote, which I'm really excited about. So I've been kind of my creative energy is like going towards that. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to do. And music does take a lot out of you. I mean, yeah. I've, I've had seasons where I'm writing furiously and then I'll go for like a two or three year stretch where I'm not writing anything musically because all my creative energy is focused on a story or some other project that I'm doing. It's just... Because a song will, I mean, I don't know how you write, but for me, a song will live with, I'll start it, and it lives with me for like a week, two weeks, three yeah. weeks, until I can kind of piece it all and together. It comes out. Or walking or whatever. I mean, what do you yeah. do? Every song is different, but I remember like Someday, for example, I remember I was, <laughs> I was, uh, which was on the show, um, featured on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember I went to New York to do some press for something, and the producer for Once Your Hill was like you have to shoot the next day you have to fly back in and there was a huge snowstorm in new york and i couldn't come back in and uh so he's like you gotta drive i'm like i'm not, I'm not dying i'm not dying for the show <laughs> but i mean i'll try yeah. to, i'll do whatever i can i like the show but, but so i took a train and i had like a 15 hour train ride from from new york to uh to raleigh actually and, oh uh, and i just remember riding in on that train just seeing you know the states go by, it's all so clear. And I just kind of started writing it. And I had the song in my head. So when I got to the hotel, it, like, it all came out. Um, I vividly remember that. I still think that's one of the better songs I've ever written. And I, I, I remember that, the, the process of that vividly. <clears throat> I love that. That's so cool. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I only have so much creative energy. And I right now, I just got to put it in a different place. But I still love music. It's still there. And it's a huge part Especially of me. Especially when you're a new father. As a new parent, though, too. I mean, that takes up the, the lion's share. <clears throat> George just turned four, and I just feel like I'm sort of getting, like, my shit together. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> that's a four-year four year gap, my man. It's going to be wow. so great. You're going to yeah. have gray hair, like me, in four years. <laughs> right now, you still look though, like you did. Whatever. Right now, you still look exactly like you did 15 years ago. <laughs> really well, I had cool. two different looks. Like, that was the first season, like, Hair bangs. Yeah. Oh, the bangs. And it was bad. Yeah, that shaggy hair. Puka shells. Yeah. You know, not a good look. Not a good look. You all had puka shells in season one. Yeah. <laughs> you were puka shells with your jeans. And so did yeah. we, honestly. I'm calling myself out here, too. But that's a style Yikes now, right? Back. It's like, oh. it's all coming back to that. I should oh. make the bangs again. Hey, babe, your wife is such a good sport. Um, she, Jamie is an amazing actress in her own right and has like a brilliant career. And I have always appreciated that she's a fellow MTV girl. You know, she probably hears about Jake Jagelski more than she wants to. Um, yeah. I don't like hearing about my husband's 
Is she she's like, I don't want to hear about Denny. Is she a good sport about it? Is she like, she's good, but she's also kind of like, what? Like she, at some point I think she's going to watch it. Cause she's just heard about it so much. Mm-hmm. And people it's, it's the craziest thing that I've done a lot of work, but this show is, it mm-hmm. has an audience like no other. And it doesn't matter where mm-hmm. we go in the world. I could be in Brazil and France, wherever, like, People are coming up and then saying Jake Jake Chigelsi. And uh, she's just never seen it. And I think one of these days she's just going to cave and binge the whole thing. And I'll watch it with her. Do you have any well, particular? I haven't seen it since it aired. Oh, yeah. You guys should watch it together, though. You really should. I'm old enough any... now to have some distance from it, too. So I think it would be just interesting to watch. That's why we started this podcast, man. We were like, why is it so special? And the first episode... We watched together. We were all bawling by the end. We were like, oh, God, it's really good. Oh, no. So you've all worked on a bunch of stuff. Like, why do you think this show connects with an audience so much all these years later? Because it's the thing that airs when you're forming your identity. I think we all identify with things we watched when we were teenagers or young adults because mm-hmm. you're formulating your identity at the same time these characters are also being formulated. And there's mm-hmm. bond there. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. connect with characters now as a grown up. I'm like, neat show, cool story, you yeah. know. But yeah. that thing that you watch when you're like malleable is important. Yeah. I think there's also something to it. You know, I think Joy, you were might have been the first person who said this like, there was no fantasy, there was no like gimmick. No one's a superhero, no one's a vampire, no one's a werewolf. We all like those movies, but mm-hmm. it, it was like kind of the last best place to go to just see groups of friends trying to figure out how to be good humans pre-social media pre-iphone you know like just a group of kids trying to find their place in the world and that's a universal truth and so i think despite it it hasn't been since yeah and despite the fact that the show premiered so long ago (laughs) these episodes still ring so true when you tune in and you watch you go like oh yeah that that's telling the truth to me. What I think is interesting is, you know, we're seeing a whole second generation discovering it now. Like, the yeah. like it now it's like, it's crazy how it's got a whole other life. And it's yeah. like, I think it's like ironic to them in the same way that they wear. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? It's <laughs> irony. They're not really watching it like enthusiastically. They're like just watching it and making fun of it. But the th- it may have started that way, but. There's no denying that you fall in love with these characters. So even yeah. if it was like, oh, this would be cool and retro to watch, the fact is there's nothing like it on television right now for teenagers. Everything is high genre driven. And right. so to be able to give teenagers a safe space, my I have a little brother who's 20 and he texted me the other day, what were the 90s like? What was it like in the late 90s? Mm. And I was like, wow. Oh. So before cell phone, awesome. what was life like before a cell phone, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's 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 awesome. cool that they're interested in that because it, it was a very different time. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that time. Where, would, that where would Jake Jagelski be right now, babe? Like, what's Jake Jagelski mm-hmm. up to? Or what, what has he been up to Agabon. since? Agabon. Oh. Just on the mm-hmm. road. <laughs> you think? Well, because well, he he's end up in Jake. like 20 now. Yeah, he's probably like, maybe he's um, maybe he's like what Barry was like. He maybe he's like the new coach, like the new high school oh. basketball coach, like he's, the new grouchy coach. Yeah, yeah, just drinking real heavily. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Anton says. He wants to be too. So I, I would be really into a sports team run by Skills and Jake Jagalski. Gotta be honest. Yeah, this would be good. Yeah. That yeah. would maybe be like rival um, rival teams that were going at it. That could be good. Ooh, that's I, don't fun. I don't know. What do you think? I have no idea. Like Jake could be, or he could be, you know, uh, Jack Dorsey. I mean, he's like, you don't. He's so he's so random. You know, he is so random. Because yeah. I completely forgot about the storyline down the road where like Jake gets arrested and goes to jail. Wait, what? Wait, what? what? Yeah, guys, it's coming. Everyone was like pounding on the glass. You and I had our hands up on the glass, <laughs> touching what? each other. Yeah. I did I not. It, it was all in the name. Of what did you know, say? It was all to protect uh, Jenny. Yeah. It was all in the name. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah it was um, like- Brian, you know, you were mentioning that you've, we, there's fans all over the world of this show. No matter where you go, people recognize you. 
Are there any specific fan encounters that you remember that were like either really meaningful or really crazy or I don't know? What's just like, I, I mean, it happens a lot with this show, um, as I'm sure you guys all know. But um, I mean, <laughs> I was in Paris last year. By the way, it's huge in France. Um, France is major. Yeah. Well, yeah was, bon nuit, French fans. Bon <laughs> cool. And it's, it made me look really more impressive more in front of my really friends um, who didn't know. <laughs> um but like somebody came up to me and they're like they're, they're like oh you play basketball and i'm like what they're, and i'm like yeah i mean i have in the past i don't really, like yeah but with scots and i'm like what they're like you know you play basketball with the scots i was like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. i didn't know that it was name like it had another name out there it's like the flower the scots yeah yeah so i had no idea what they were saying so it took a little while but um yeah it's huge out there it's crazy yeah yeah, what about you? I don't know. It happens a lot. I don't know. You know what? We got we got reminded today. People were talking about being so excited for this, and they posted a bunch of photos from the last convention that you and I and Hillary were at. The yeah. one in um, Wilmington, Joy, you were working, so you, I remember you couldn't be there. But people were posting those photos we all took together, and then someone posted the video of the girls who got engaged that we helped with. Hill, yeah, yeah. yeah. We did a photo op for a fan and the whole thing was a ruse and there were video cameras going and her girlfriend set it up and we literally were like holding her up when she almost fainted from the surprise of being proposed to what? We were just like, this is a very intimate special moment for us. Let's take pictures. It was so cool. What people do, they really feel like the show is like these characters mean so much to them. And, and they're I'm real. So cool, you, know? you guys, I went to go see Greenberg play in Vancouver right after I left the right. show. So I left the show. I went and I had a secret baby. Gus was a year old. So One Tree Hill was still on the air, but we weren't on it. <laughs> and Jeff was shooting a movie in Vancouver. And Greenberg's like, hey, I'm in town. Or right, maybe I saw a flyer. And I was like, are you here? <laughs> and so I went to go see Greenberg. And all these <laughs> girls in the audience are like, what is going on? Did you have the baby that. with you? No, I had my little girl that I would die if you had Gus in like a Bjorn and people were like, it's baby Jenny. No, but we did go to lunch the next day and I brought my baby. And it was so weird for you because you're like, you really have a baby. Like we worked with the baby. And you together. were young. Yeah, like, I didn't have a baby till 10, 12 years after that. So that was blowing mm -hmm. my mind. I was just not in that, that headspace. Yeah, well. Now yeah. you've got, you're, he's like a man. He's shaving now. Yeah. Kid's got a mustache. It's crazy. It's crazy. Is there anything that's been really surprising for you about parenthood? I mean, I know they're I know they're really little still. I guess what I was surprised most by was um just how many people in your life step up and mm -hmm. like how people say it takes a village. And I didn't really you hear that, but I didn't really realize until we we needed the help. And so many of our friends and family have stepped up and gotten on planes and then showed up and been there for us. Because two at the same time, when you don't know what you're doing, is intense. So uh, yeah. I guess I've just, it's deepened my appreciation and my love for my support system. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Oh, Ryan, we it's miss so you so me. much. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, you're directing a movie. Yeah. You're dadding it up. Um, Start that in May, I think. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. I think so. All right. Where are you guys gonna shoot it? Uh probably Rhode Island. Yeah. Oh, so I'm probably gonna have to go out there in two weeks to prep. And this is my first time directing. So it's a drama. It's called Junction. Um, so it's gonna be an intense, but I love indies. It's gonna be an intense, uh intense shoot uh for like a month and a half. And then yeah, I'll be editing all summer. But I don't know, I've been working. I just finished a really cool movie with uh, Jonah Hill and Eddie Murphy called You People that's coming out on Netflix. Ooh. Uh, casual, yeah, yeah it's no very it's good. Good. Yes. 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 Casual yes. drop. <laughs> why we love him. He's so yeah. just easy and cool. Cool <laughs> and cool. Hey, well, I was chilling during COVID, so that came out of nowhere. I was like, oh, okay, that's that's awesome. Um, so it's nice. To you deserve back. it. You deserve all of it. You're so talented mm -hmm. and so easy to work with, and such a consummate professional, and so fun. And I'm just so glad for all the success that comes your way. And um, I, I want to I want to find something else for all of us to work on together. Yes, yeah. I was just going to say it. Cool Ooh, everything is real sparkly when we're together, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
don't just make sure just make sure you bring your guitar. You can leave it at my house, Brian. No one goes out about it. <laughs> right. You gotta come over and start leaving stuff at your house now. Just be hey, like, hi, yeah. Jimmy. I'm just gonna leave this. Open door Maybe closet. it'll be a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, but it'll yes. just be super, super late. Right. Uh, we miss you so much, dude. Hey, will you come on the regular podcast in season three when yeah. Jake and Peyton are in Savannah? So how's it work? We watch an episode and we talk about it? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to make right. you, you sit down and your watch it. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Done. Yeah. Uh, it's so home. good to see you and talk with you. Honestly, like I've missed your face, man. I, I, I love all of you so much. And so, uh, really, congrats on the success of this and uh, your show, Sophia. I know you guys are all on it today, so that's so cool. It's Maybe so fun. It to my face. I love you. Um, all right, so we're going to see you soon then. It's going to be fantastic. It. All right, tell the family yeah. we said hi. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Those babies for us. Yeah. Oh, I love him so much. <laughs> Is that the quietest I've ever been during an interview? I just sat like this. I think it was. I think it was. Also, why is your lighting amazing? You're like in a basement. You find the best lighting no matter where oh, you go. I was going to say that about yours. I feel like I look like I'm being interrogated by the police. Like it's very <laughs> aggressive. No, it's like also, soft. I'm so it's mad, like guys. We ordered these cute neon you know, trick lightning bolts. And I was so excited to get off work in time to do this that I ran out of the van. And now sweet Doug, who drives me to work, has a lightning bolt in his van. It's supposed to be right here. I can't do it. There it goes. What's been, what's been cool is seen throughout the course of like 23 million downloads and all the fan interactions is seeing them to their drama queens rooms and like put their crowns out and their lightning bolts out. And it kind of made us a little bit like, you know, we had we had a little bit of envy. We were like, "Well, I want a pink neon lighting bulb." So hard. Can I? Well, I want to hear more of what the fans have to say because yes. they've, been, they've been sending in a lot of questions and comments, and I can't wait to hear. Oh, we have one already. Well, while we answer these, I'm going to make another drink. <laughs> <laughs> Why would okay, I? Is- what item from set would each of us? Oh, did we wish we took? We took. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. What item from set? Um, from this set, you know, Sophia and I have spoken at length about that red vintage couch that was in Karen's cafe. That was a really good. A cur- it was a curved couch in the corner. Yeah. Front window. It was beautiful. Yeah, was beautiful. I wish we had that. You know I wish else? I had the cutout of the Toe the Wet Sprocket song. What? What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is a place where everything's better and everything's safe. That's from that's from Toad the Wet Sprocket. I didn't see my pants. I didn't know that. <laughs> what did you think it was from? I knew it was a song lyric, but I didn't think it was from that band. Somebody told me this is the place where everything's better and everything's safe. Walk on the ocean. Yeah, it's called Walk on the Ocean, I think. Do I not think they sang that because I heard, did you cover it? Who covered it? Because I just felt like, I just feel like that's our song. (laughs) All the tickets. I I wish I took that. Hillary, we have another question, but tell us what you, uh, what would you have taken? The comment. You know what I'm mad I didn't take? In later seasons, they got a really cool old black pickup truck for Julian, oh. for my husband's character. Yeah. Also bougie, taking cars and shit. I would have taken it. I mean, I would have bought it an old ripped up design. And I'm like, like, you should have the comment. And I want that truck. I'm mad about mm-hmm. it. Next question. <laughs> oh, Rebecca. Oh, this is sweet. If you had a yearbook for yourself right now, what would your senior quote be? I mean, apparently it would be from a Toad the Wet Sprocket song. <laughs> Joy, how long have we been saying that quote and writing that quote? And I had zero idea. No idea. No <laughs> clue. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, quotes. Yearbook quotes. Um, my senior quote is. Ooh, I mean, let it come to you. 
Okay, so here's the deal. I was kind of an asshole my senior year in high school because I was just ready to get out of Virginia and go to New York. And I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder about certain things in my small town. And mm -hmm. I won the senior superlative most dramatic. And my quote in like this little senior like booklet that comes out was, if you thought I liked you in high school, I was only acting. And I cringe about that right now because it's so bitchy and like so unwarranted because I really oh, no. love my hometown and I really love all the kids I graduated with. And I'm like, why did I say that? So what would your quote be now then if, if this was your senior year? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Simon Birch. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Thank God. <laughs> Um, of all the houses on the show, such as Brooks, Felix, Dan's, all the houses are big. Are those actual houses in Wilmington? And are they actually all that big? Well, Joy and I lived on the opposite side of the tracks. Haley and Brooke, or Haley and Peyton's house are actually right next door to each other. Mm -hmm. um, they're just across, they're like catty corner from each other. And we are actually over by New Hanover High School, which is another, I want to say it's another Title I school. And so I liked that we title one, not chapter one. Why am I thinking chapter one? I mean, it's cool the pond. Um, but yeah, so your house was for sure real. Yeah, yeah. Brooke and Felix's house were next door to each other, and they were definitely in like a fancy part of town. They were big homes, and then where Dan's house was was like the fancy, 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 fancy part. Oh, of town. Yeah, that was like houses and guest houses and like big like, so, community. I was not accustomed to any and seeing anything like that so yeah, yeah this house, this house was kind of small though yeah and, I mean they were, they were medium sized it wasn't like they weren't like yeah, we, had, we had little pockets of every kind of sort of socioeconomic um, yeah. experience the one thing I don't think we really ever showed though I don't think we ever had a family in an apartment which feels weird because so many families live in apartments but yeah. I guess maybe because Wilmington is such a house town like the apartments started getting built there in the later years that we were filming there weren't really even many apartment buildings and there, there were college kids living there it's a it's college just, town. Yeah, it was college yeah hmm. I really like this next question it's smart oh this is a good one Hillary, uh, well, when you guys had scenes on the phone, were you actually talking to someone, y'all? Mike Leone. Mike yeah. Leone yeah. every time. The supervisor. I remember one call when I actually, I think we actually had James on the phone or it might've been, and there was another one when we had Paul, I had Paul reading, we called Paul and he read someone else's lines for me because it was like an acting moment and I just needed some real yeah. feedback. Yeah. But yeah. I definitely feel like most of the time they'll just have, yeah, the script supervisor read for you, which is super weird, especially because those people are usually your friends, but not the people on the show. And then we started to do things like if we were at work at the same time, if you, you know, if, if Haley had to call Brooke and I was like in the hair and makeup shower, I'd run in and do the off camera. We, we really started to do that That's for each true. other. Because it's yeah. hard to act with like, essentially like your friend's dad pretending to be Peyton. Like it's weird. So we, we tried, but yeah, sometimes you've got somebody being like, well, gee, Brooke. And you're like, stop it. I can't yeah. concentrate when you're doing this. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's All right. Oh, Grace okay. says, in what ways do you think Sam is similar, different than Brooke Davis? Do you think they have any similar personality traits? Oh, Sam. That's so sweet. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they're both really motivated women who aren't going to let anything in the world hold them back from achieving in a really, um, you know, competitive landscape and also in like a major way. I think yeah. I think Sam is a little calmer, perhaps a little more professional than Brooke Davis. But there's she's feisty in there. Like you don't want to you don't want to push her. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Maybe they are similar. What did you guys see when you came to the set? Well, That's listen, great. Brooke Davis was always the boss. Always, always, always the boss. Yeah. And we didn't really get to see her go into her 30s, you know, mm -hmm. and get, like, closer to 40. We saw her in those yeah. years where we all are kind of just testing the waters. 
And so yeah. a self-assured Brooke Davis is every bit as calm and powerful as Sam, 100%. Ooh, I like that. Yes. I think I so, like too. That. I think Brooke was, she was always the boss, but not everyone always saw it. And she was trying, mm -hmm. she was young and just scra kind of scrappy in a way of like trying to constantly prove it. And there yeah. was a, there's an elegance and a subtleness to Sam. Yeah. That I have yes. someone here to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I want. You guys, it's our fourth <laughs> drama queen. Hello. Oh, oh my Hello. gosh, you look so beautiful. Dr. Lex oh, truly has yes, a new mama. look. Ooh, oh, yes. Yes. When does it start? It's yeah. actually, well, her hair Wait. is part in the middle today, but usually oh, yeah. we have a. We have the exact same part. I'm like, you too can get a Sophia Bush and Gorgeous. chocolate and hazelnuts and strawberry. <laughs> Um, you guys, we were really lucky when we came up to to film Good Sam because your cast was so 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 welcoming, mm -hmm. and oh my God, there we are. my cheerleading photo! Look at our cheerleading knees! I like all of us it. got right into formation. I, I love, love that photo it. so much. We did. Well, it was so cool. Everybody was like, "Let's take a picture." Yeah. 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 It was like perfect scene. Tell us about your high school experience. Who were you in high school, Sky? Oh my God, that's so funny that you asked because I was literally just downstairs talking to Jason Isaacs about my high school experience. My crush. And, and I went to high school, I went to Lincoln Park High School in Chicago. And anyone who knows Chicago knows mm -hmm. that um, at that time in Lincoln Park, where Lincoln Park High School is, it was right in the district of the kids of Lincoln Park, very wealthy, very smart kid, majority white, and Cabrini Green the roughest projects yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. So that's where I really learned how to like code switch mm -hmm. because my sister was very much attached to the Cabrini Green crowd. Mm -hmm. And I was very much attached to the very smart, like Ivy Lee, we're going to go, we're going to shoot to the sky, like very ambitious and outgoing. And they were just more into the things that I was into. But I had to keep like kind of playing both sides, which is quite interesting because that was something important to me that I wanted to do with Dr. Lex Truly. Yeah. You know, because while I may be able to like be myself with my friends, I still know like in America, it's best to just switch over to mainstream and talk a certain type of way so that the patient can trust you with their life in mm -hmm. your hands. So mm -hmm. many people are preconditioned to like only trust what they know and like what they're mm -hmm. comfortable with. And so if you yeah. come with any kind of energy that's not familiar to them, it's like, oh, this is bad, this is wrong, this is, you know, uncomfortable. And so I love that your character is shaking things up. I love that you have this military background where you're like a beautiful homecoming queen cheerleader that's also like, I'm really good with guns. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, Uncle Sam was my sugar daddy. <laughs> he bought me all my books in school and made sure I was- How did you get into the military? What's that <laughs> for? <laughs> How'd you get well, the you know what? Honestly, um, my dad was a doctor and my mom was a teacher and I would hear them talk about student debt all the time. And like, mm -hmm. I share the story with Sophia. Like I thought Sally Mae was a real like woman with uh, like a very beautiful silver, <laughs> silver locks. And she made, Amer <laughs> she made American pies every weekend. And just the sweetest, <laughs> the sweetest Sally Mae, like the sweetest woman. And she just wanted to make sure you got that education. So she goes, yeah. give me the money, but you're going to have to give it back to Sally. And I had this, this, I was a very, I had a, a very vivid imagination as a kid. So I thought Sally, I was like, honey, Sally May, I don't want any relationship with Sally May. She sounds sweet, <laughs> but I don't want her money. And, and I just kind of grew up not wanting to have that, that umbrella of debt that just yeah. forces these young kids to go straight into the corporate world to pay off this, this debt. When like, mm -hmm. how do we know who we want to be at 17, 18 years old? I didn't decide to act until I was 29. Really? Yeah. Wow. 29, girl. And I did not have a, a resume, a formal training. I had life experience, and that's what I took in the room. How did you make that's that decision? I had to separate myself. You know, I was sitting in a cubicle for two years in New York, a cubicle that I worked so hard to get to. You know, I thought I was going to have my Carrie Bradshaw life. Mm. And just like make this money and wear cool shoes and hang out with Wall Street models. And like, that was just going to be the life. And it was the life, but it was like totally opposite ends of the spectrum. 
It was like I was partying hard and then back in this just very sterile, neutral, cubicle world that was just sucking the life out of me. But what I noticed is they would always send me in to boardrooms to close the deals mm -hmm. because I would go in there because this was a pharmaceutical oh my marketing God, this firm. This woman doing any kind but of. But I would go in there and I'd be like, "So we about to study drugs or what?" And these are like a bunch of like nerds that are like, <laughs> "Oh my God, this so exciting!" You know, so like I would just go in there and make it fun and like. Yeah, so they would always send me in, but I was like, I'm performing, like I'm getting yeah. yes. And it, yeah, and and then after that, everyone just kept saying to me, like, Are you? You've never thought about acting? Like you've never, you never. And I'm like, I mean, of course I've thought about it. I was Those in dance plays, you no, know, like community. Yeah, I was always in dance theater since I was a kid and recitals. Like I was never afraid of the stage, and another version of me would show up. Um, I knew the who am I. Yeah. Based off of where I am and who I'm talking to, like the who mm -hmm. am I with you ladies isn't the who am I with my mom or the who am I if a cop pulls me over or the who am I in the courtroom yeah. or at the club. Right. So I learned that very early on on how can it serve me? Because at the age of 17, I've had to figure everything out in my life, because while I may have said my dad's a doctor, my mom's a teacher, she hit the fan when I was 12. So like I had to really learn how to figure out, OK, how can I how can I not fall into the hole and the trap of being somebody's baby mama and doing nails in Chicago, which was like what I was surrounded by. So when I went to the military, that's where it really helped because it taught me how to process and utilize fear. And then the corporate world taught me how to market. So I was able to market myself. I didn't have an agent when I got Go see. I haven't had an agent in she seven years. Us. What? Anyway, when people say who represents you, she goes, "I do." I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I message. I message. I saw you the are post. So, so impressive. Weird. It's just we're, amazing. We're getting ready to wrap, so we can send yeah. people to watch. I mean, we can talk forever, but no. But I want to know when you were growing up, who were the drama queens that you looked up to? Who were your drama queen heroes? Yes, rapid fire. Let's go. I want to oh, know. Oh my god, uh, Lisa Turtle on Save by the oh, Bell. Yes, um, and um, Shannon Doherty on Nine Hundred Two and Zero. That was Ooh. that was my jam. I was addicted yes. to those, and I record every episode in because in tapes, and then my yeah. friends in the neighborhood would come over and they would rent episodes, and I had it I had it numbered from. <laughs> Season and I like season oh seven, God. and I were rented out like blockbuster. I love that you made it. I sure did. I had a library, and it was business, and I was making money off of Nine Two One Zero. Amazing! You guys can go. I everybody out there, you guys can come, let's come watch these amazing women as these incredible doctors. Come watch. You're so proud of you guys. Yes, I miss you, so ladies. It was so, it was so, so special. special. We loved working with you, Sky, and. Uh, it's We're gonna party in New York. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you coming to be with the two of us was so cool. It and I was. remember when you left, she was like, that's what we're doing. Like yeah. we're building these families and I'm so excited for everyone. Two minutes, guys, yep. to Good Sam, episode yep. eight of season one with these two gorgeous ladies and, and us. And my cast that's downstairs waiting yeah, for us. Yeah. Okay, listen, the cast was so, so cool. Sophia knew what a huge crush I had on Jason Isaac. <laughs> I geeked out so you hard. You go real, real quick. <laughs> I already know, Sky. I geeked yeah, out so them. hard. Oh, she did. Yeah, they took a picture nice. and sent it to her husband. It was cute. What well a cool played. guy. Um, no, honestly, please give all of them great big, huge hugs for us because it was so nice to be welcomed into your family. And we're so excited to, you know, send all our Drama Queens fans over to hang out on the on the medical set of Good Sam. You guys are yeah. saving lives, changing the world. I can't we wait for you all to see the episode. I think we have, who did this little treat come from? Which one of you took this? Who filmed it? I don't remember. Did I? You what? filmed it. Did it. Which I one? Did it. This was our, our favorite moment from being on set and I love you. Thank you for having us. We love you. Thank you. Thanks for, us, Thanks for Thank you. joining us, everybody. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We have a little mm -hmm. sign off for you. We'll see you on CBS in one minute. Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at dramaqueensoth or email us at dramaqueens at iheartradio.com. See, see you, you next time. time. We're all High school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queen.